When you've gone through narcissistic abuse, many times you aren't even really sure who you can trust after you go through it. A lot of my clients, a lot of the people here on YouTube, this family, you have told me you're not sure who you can trust, if you can trust anyone. So today, queenbeing.com, we're gonna talk about how you know when to go no contact when you meet a new person. How do you know who is worth your time? as you're moving forward. Whether we're talking about friends, romantic partners, family members, how do you know when it's appropriate to go no contact with someone without having to go through an entire relationship with them to find out? So, let's get started. My name is Angie Atkinson and on this channel I offer free daily video coaching to help you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse in toxic relationships. I like to call it toxic relationship rehab. So, if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button and we'll get going. We've talked before about how going into a relationship it's really healthy to have deal breakers or things that mean, you know what, I'm done with this, I'm walking away, and without discussion. So up front you tell this person, for example in my case, my basic deal breakers are don't cheat on me, don't hurt my children, don't abuse me, verbally or otherwise physically of course but when we're talking about friendships family relationships new relationships it seems like we have to have more deal breakers my deal breakers for friends are a little different basically I work with people I am open-minded I don't like to argue but I'm up for a friendly debate but when it comes to getting down to the point where I trust a person and I'm willing to consider that person a true friend that's a whole other ball of wax. There's so much more to it. There has to be mutual respect. There has to be kindness. There has to be open-mindedness and trust. I had a very interesting conversation with Dana Morningstar about this during our interview last week and I thought I would share it with you today because there's so much more to the no contact concept than we normally talk about. Because what happens is when we're choosing people to be part of our lives, when we're choosing friends, when we're choosing romantic partners, we have to think about who they are and how they are affecting our lives. So take a look at this. I'm a big fan of people doing whatever they need to do in order to keep themselves safe or sane. So my old deal breakers for going no contact used to be if some, if I had concrete evidence that that person was indeed lying, you know, actually not even lying, like cheating, stealing, or physically abusive. My old deal breakers were very lax when it came to going no contact with somebody. Like it, it was basically like if I couldn't hang on anymore, then I would go no contact with them. Right. And I used to think that that was healthy. It's really all about setting boundaries and figuring out exactly what it is that is acceptable to you and what is not acceptable to you. Because the bottom line is when someone comes into our lives and they instantly start to violate our boundaries, this puts us in a difficult spot. And we have to decide, is this person worth this? And I'm going to tell you right now, 99.9% .9 of the time, someone who violates your boundaries repeatedly again and again has no interest in them at all. No interest in respecting you or your boundaries. And so that's gonna be a big important note when you're thinking about who is allowed in your life and who is not. The thing is, for so long, while you were with a narcissist, whether you were raised by one or not, if you ended up with a narcissist, narcissists don't believe in you having boundaries. Of course, they have plenty of boundaries of their own that you must stick to, but they're, they don't believe that anyone else deserves to have boundaries. And so you have to reestablish your ability to create and maintain your boundaries. So this is really important. Take a look at this. The new me realizes that my boundaries were very weak and to tighten things way up. And I felt mean and judgmental tightening them up. So nowadays I'm to the point where if a person, if the dynamic between us is perpetually confusing or if it's crazy making, or if it just feels off, then I just go no contact. Another thing we deal with when we go through narcissistic abuse is the guilt factor. We feel guilty for everything. We feel guilty that we allowed ourselves to feel things. We feel guilty that we decide to go no contact. We allow guilt to actually keep us in these horrible relationships for years, decades sometimes. And this is so important. So take a look at this clip where Dana talks about why she was able to let go of some of her own guilt in this situation. Take a look. I had to get to the place where I'm more comfortable with that, but it's, it's so much easier if there's not that emotional investment. So like if I'm meeting a new person and I just feel that dark energy or I feel like 
something's off or, you know, things just start to get confusing. I'm like, you know what? I'm done. Like I've been down this road before. I'm not doing this again. I don't care if it's me or if it's them. It's not worth my sanity to try to figure it out. So there's plenty of people in my life that I don't feel that way around. So it's not worth me sticking in there trying to figure out what's going on. Yep. I, I feel similarly. And I actually, I kind of joked this morning and I've joked before about, you know, I it, like if, if I feel like you're not worth my energy, you're dead to me. And that's a joke when I say it that way, but <laughs> yeah, but it's kind of true in a way. I, I literally just forget people exist because if they're not, and that sounds really a lot harsher than what you said, <laughs> but, but it's the same concept. I, I'm not going to waste my time on people who aren't interested in engaging meaningfully, right? I don't know. Hands okay. down. Like it, it either, like, I think it either nourishes our soul or it doesn't. Yes, exactly. And exactly. that was a really big thing for me because again, if you're, if a person's used to having all kinds of, you know, mediocre friendships or you know, if they're used to abuse, then abuse doesn't register as a problem until right. they can no longer hang on. If they're used to mediocre, they're going to hang in there for probably four times as long yes. and then feel um, like something's missing, but they can't put their finger on it. But if when you're, and this goes back to like getting in tune with our intuition and our emotions and ourself, you know how it feels when you feel nourished. You know, you have energy, you feel alive, you feel good, you leave, you're smiling, you're, you're like, man, I, I really enjoy spending time with that person. Yeah. Like, that kind of a feeling, like aim for that. That's, that's the zone, you know? Set standards and have, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I agree a hundred percent. I think the bottom line here is you have to trust your gut. You have to know what's acceptable, what isn't. If somebody just doesn't feel right to you, if somebody makes you feel uncomfortable or miserable or even kind of icky and you can't quite put your finger on it, that is your intuition telling you, no, not this person. I don't really tell people you're dead to me, but I do sometimes just forget a person exists when there's someone who I know is not going to help make my life better. So let me know what your thoughts are about this. Next, we're going to talk about exactly how you can figure out if someone is worth having in your life, whether this person is a narcissist, or not. So let's talk about it. We are going to do a very quick personal inventory of your relationship. So grab yourself a pen and a piece of paper and let's do this together, shall we? Now this will work with any type of relationship. So don't feel like you have to only do this about your romantic relationship. You can do this kind of inventory with anyone you're in a relationship with, whether this is a friend, a spouse, a partner, a business partner, a coworker, someone in your family, the relationship inventory idea works. So grab your pen and paper and let's get going. Okay, this is really simple. So on your piece of paper, I want you to write down the words relationship inventory, okay? And then create two columns, a positive and a negative, and spend a few minutes writing down all the positive qualities and all the negative qualities you can see in this person. Go. Feel free to pause the video and come back for the next step. The next thing you're going to do is write down your top 10 life priorities. So maybe they're like family, home, career, generosity, friendship, social stuff, conversation, intimacy, discussion, conversation, whatever. Whatever your personal top 10 priorities are, write them down. Once you've done that, go back through the list and write yes or no next to each one as to can this person help me with these things in my life. Now, if this is just a friend, obviously they're not going to be able to help you with physical intimacy, but they can certainly help you with emotional intimacy. You get the idea. Whatever priorities you have in relation to your life as this person applies to it. All right. So if this is a coworker, then your top 10 priorities regarding work and life. And if this person, whether or not they can in some way make that a better or more positive situation, on each of those priorities, yes or no. Can they help with that priority? Now I want you to, once you've done that, now I want you to go back up to the first list and I want you to go down the list and see, did you have more negatives or more positives on that list? That is one indicator of whether or not that person is really a positive influence in your life. Now, if you go down to the second list, it's gonna be pretty simple. How many yeses and how many noes do you have? If you have more yeses, then that person may compliment your life. If you have more noes and those noes indicate that this person could actually be harmful for your life, your answer is already there. But in some cases like friendship and things like that, it might not be exactly clear. Still, you can look at the list and you can see 
will this person benefit my life or not? If they do benefit your life, great, continue the relationship with them. If they don't, you got a couple of choices. Number one, you can go ahead and sit down and have a discussion with them and explain why you need what you need or what you need from them and see if they're willing to kind of work with you on that. If they are, maybe they're not a narcissist and they just didn't know what you needed. If they're not willing to work with you, well, you all know what that's probably going to mean. Chances are you're dealing with someone who, whether they're a narcissist or not, is not willing to help you make your life better. To be fair, this is a two-sided coin. You also must be willing to help them make their life better. But as an empath, I'm sure you're already on that path. So you could discuss ways that you could, as, as a twosome, make the relationship more effective for both of you. Or if that doesn't work, create an exit strategy. Figure out how you're going to get out of the relationship and open your life for someone who is going to be more positive for you and you for them. If this is a coworker or a friend, there's a little more wiggle room there. But no matter what you decide, don't be sad. Just know that you're not only doing yourself a huge favor, but you're also not doing the other person a disservice by having a relationship with them that maybe isn't benefiting either one of you. Don't be sad about it. Be happy and keep your eyes open for new opportunities in the future as you move forward. I know, easier said than done, but it does help. This brings me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, how do you decide your deal breakers when you decide whether someone is worth having in your life or not? Share your thoughts, share your ideas, and your experiences in the comment section below, and let's discuss it. That's all I've got for you right now. As always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life, and hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. I'll see you soon. It's my mission to teach others what I know to be true. You really can create the life you want. Take care of your body, take care of your soul, nurture the real you and introduce him or her to the world. Be comfortable in your own skin and in your place in this world. Take your spot, take it now, and the universe will take its cue from you. You feel me? If so, subscribe to my channel. Let's get it done together.